Have you ever found yourself tipsy or outright plastered? According to reports from the World Health Organization, almost half the planet's population aged 15 and up indulges in alcohol at least occasionally, and for some, occasionally is putting it lightly, about one in every six drinkers reportedly consumes alcohol in large amounts and on a regular basis. The consequences? They're not minor. The WHO once logged over three million deaths in a single year that were linked directly or indirectly to drinking. That amounted to nearly 6% of all deaths worldwide at the time. And no, it wasn't just liver failure or alcohol poisoning. These deaths include anything where alcohol played a role, from car accidents to violent encounters. It paints a pretty sobering picture. Yet despite these risks, drinking remains widespread. So if we're going to do it, we should at least know how to do it with a little more caution. One major tip, never drink on an empty belly. But why does that matter? What exactly happens when you pour alcohol into a body that hasn't eaten? That's what we're unpacking today. Before we dive in, let's touch on something important. Who's doing the most reckless drinking? Quite often it's people who are too young to be drinking in the first place. In the United States, for instance, where you have to be 21 to legally buy booze, underage alcohol use is still the number one substance abuse problem among teens and young adults. Globally, most nations set the legal drinking age at either 18 or 19. A few have it even lower, and some have no age restriction at all. Interestingly, there doesn't seem to be a clear connection between the age limit and how much people drink, or how recklessly they do it. In the US, this has been a source of ongoing debate. Some studies suggest raising the legal age to 21 reduced underage drinking. Others argue it simply pushed teenagers to drink in secret, leading to more dangerous binge drinking behind closed doors. According to data from the CDC, even though underage drinking is illegal, individuals aged 12 to 20 still consume over 10% of all alcohol sold in the country. Most of that drinking, nearly all of it in fact, falls into the binge category. In the same year that study was conducted, over 4,000 minors died due to alcohol-related causes. Almost 200,000 more ended up in the emergency room. All of this brings us back to our main point. How to drink more safely if you're going to drink at all. And one key part of that, eat something beforehand. Groups like HAMS, which stands for Harm Reduction for Alcohol, recommend a few precautions before you start drinking. One of the most effective is making sure you have food in your stomach. Here's why. Your stomach isn't very good at absorbing alcohol. That job mostly falls to your small intestine, which has a much larger surface area and absorbs substances into the bloodstream quickly. Between your stomach and your intestine is a muscular valve known as the pyloric sphincter. When you eat a full meal, especially one loaded with fats or complex carbs, this valve stays shut so your body can begin digesting the food properly. What that means in practical terms is simple. If you've eaten a large fatty meal, it takes longer for alcohol to leave your stomach and get absorbed in your intestines. The result? A slower, more manageable rise in your blood alcohol concentration you're less likely to get hammered quickly and far less likely to wake up with no recollection of the night before. On the flip side, drinking on an empty stomach lets the alcohol flow right through into your small intestine where it gets absorbed like a sponge in a puddle. Your blood alcohol level shoots up fast. That's when people start making poor decisions, blacking out or in extreme cases waking up in a hospital with no idea how they got there. Also worth noting, eating after you've already had a lot to drink won't help much. Once the alcohol is in your system, it's going to stay there until your liver has a chance to break it down, no matter how many burgers or bagels you eat after the fact. 
So what should you eat before going out? Hams, as even something like pizza will do the trick. Other research suggests opting for healthy fats and proteins might be a better call. Think along the lines of salmon, eggs, avocado, almonds or hummus. These foods do a better job at slowing alcohol absorption. And don't fall for the old myth about greasy food soaking up alcohol after a night of drinking. If anything, that's a comfort thing. It won't change your blood alcohol levels. If you want to prep your body for a heavy night in advance, consider nutrient-dense options that support liver function. Turmeric, spinach, cinnamon, beets, broccoli, even a fresh squeeze of lemon juice. Not that artificial stuff in plastic bottles can help protect your system. Whatever you go with, the key message is simple. Fuel your body first. It's better for your organs, better for your judgment, and may keep you out of serious trouble. Now let's be honest. If you're young and tight on cash, or just eager to feel the buzz faster, you might be tempted to skip food altogether. There's even a name for this habit. Drunk orexia. It's when people deliberately avoid eating so they can get drunk faster or skip the calories from meals to make room for alcohol. A study from the University of Missouri found this is pretty common among college students. Over 60% said they avoided food to avoid gaining weight from drinking. Only about one in five admitted they did it just to feel the effects of alcohol more quickly. In the UK, reports show a similar trend. Some people even say it's a way to stretch their limited cash on a night out. Get drunk faster, spend less. Critics of the term call it another way to shame young people for parting, but anyone who's been to college or hit the club scene knows this is a real thing, and it's not good. The risks of drunkorexia are huge. For one, it throws your body's chemistry into chaos. And second, many young people have a sort of invincibility complex. They think nothing can truly hurt them. That is, until they find themselves with a concussion from falling off a sidewalk or needing stitches after walking into a glass door. If you've ever downed alcohol on an empty stomach, you don't need science to tell you it hits harder. But science backs it up anyway. The New York Times reported on studies showing that people who drink without eating first get significantly more intoxicated. That matters, especially if you're near the legal limit for driving. A sandwich before you leave the house could be the difference between blowing under or over the line during a traffic stop. The research is clear. When there's food in your gut, especially complex carbs, fats or proteins, your body absorbs the alcohol slower. Once the booze is in your bloodstream, no amount of water, coffee or cold showers is going to magically make it disappear faster. Time is the only remedy. So here's the bottom line. If you're going to drink, whether it's a celebration, a night out, or just relaxing at home, do your body and your future self a favor. Eat first. It won't ruin your fun, but it might keep you safer. And in the long run, that's what really counts. Ever tested the difference between drinking on an empty stomach versus after a meal? Did it hit you differently? Share your experience down below. We'd love to hear it. And if you're curious about what happens when someone drinks nothing but soda, be sure to check out our other video on that wild topic. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you found this useful or interesting, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one.